Here is my second example for graphing a trig function by the five-point method. This one will be a cosine graph. All right, so in this example, again, we're going to use the five main points to graph the function. You may want to pause the video quickly and write down the function that we're looking at in this video. Before we start finding our points, one thing that I like to do is I always like to take a look at the A value to see the general shape of the curve um, that the five points should give me. So with this one, remember in a cosine function, if A is a positive value, we start at a maximum, we travel down to the minimum, and then back up to the maximum using our five points. But if A is a negative value, we start at a minimum, we travel to the maximum, and back down to the minimum. So it looks like for this particular function that we're graphing, we're going to be using this idea for the general sketch of our function. Okay, so just like we did in the first example on the previous video, here I want to find A, C, and D, or identify those first. A um, it looks like A is negative 2, but to help us use that value for the amplitude, we think about it in terms of the absolute value. However, because it's negative, we know that it's going to start at a minimum. C is negative pi over 4. D is 1. We're going to use the value of B to find the period. Because B is equal to 2, our period would be equal to pi. Our first point will be at the x value that we determined for our horizontal shift, which was negative pi over 4, will be our x coordinate. But remember, the y coordinate is going to be at a minimum value, and therefore, we're just going to take our d value and subtract the absolute value of a, or 2, which would give us negative 1. Our first point is at negative pi over 4 negative 1. Okay, so we have our first point at negative pi over 4, negative 1. Notice down here at the bottom I've shown you how we find our final point in the period. We're actually going to take negative pi over 4 and add pi to it to determine the last point that would be just in this period that we're looking at. Negative pi over 4 plus pi leaves us 3 pi over 4, negative 1. So our final point that we need to worry about is going to be 3 pi over 4, negative 1. Both of the points that we have found were minimum points. So now let's find the maximum point. Well, if you think about where the maximum would occur, it's going to occur halfway between our two minimums. So basically, to find the x value, I take and add negative pi over 4 plus 3 pi over 4 and divide that by 2. I know that that requires a little bit of arithmetic, but essentially you're thinking about 2 pi over 4 divided by 2, which gives you pi over 4. So our maximum is going to occur at the point pi over 4, 3. We now have three of our five points. All right, so now we're going to find our final two points. And in order for us to do that, if you look at the graph, some people are able to look at the graph and understand where these would fall. But basically, we're looking for two points on the D-line. Our D line is at 1. The first point would be that point that falls between negative pi over 4 and pi over 4. That would be 0. Our second point would be between pi over 4 and 3 pi over 4, which would be pi over 2. So these two remaining points we will now look at on our graph. Here we have all of our information put together in one place. 
the first point that we found was our very first minimum, and that was the point negative pi over 4, negative 1. The second point that we found was actually the last point in our period, which was 3 pi over 4, negative 1. The third thing that we found in this one was our maximum. Our maximum is at pi over 4, 3. And then we found our final two points, which were on the D-line, 0, 1, pi over 2, 1. And lastly, it's just a matter of taking and drawing the smooth curve through those five points. So now I've just gone into Desmos and graphed my function. Um, I've changed the settings so that um, it would be in terms of pi over 4 along the x-axis, just so that it would give me some nice marks. But what you want to think about is really what you're seeing in what we've graphed is you're seeing this part of the function. I hope that helps. You can also see that I've put the d-line on the graph. Um, to put the d-line on the graph in Desmos, I basically just type in a second equation of y is equal to 1 for that horizontal line. That allows us to see the point on the horizontal line um, on our function as well. I hope this video has helped maybe answer some more questions that you've had. Please feel free to continue sending me emails.